Um, want to maximize the amount of time that we've got here. Um, thank you for joining us. I did uh, turn on the recording for the meeting um, at some point um, after the session is done when Google finishes processing the recording file. Um, it will automatically be shared with everybody and you're able to um, view that at any time in the future if you'd like. You won't get any kind of an email notice about it. It'll actually just show up in your Google Drive under the Shared With Me folder. Um, so if you go looking for that in the future and can't find it, just shoot me an email and, uh, and I can let you know where it is and send you a link to it. Um, the session uh, from 9 to 10 this morning is Google Slides Basics. Um, we did one of these sessions yesterday and came very, very close to getting through everything that, um, that I've got in the uh, presentation material. So hopefully we'll achieve the same today. Um, if you have questions throughout the session, feel free just to um, unmute yourself and ask the question uh, verbally. Um, if it's something that can be answered later, you know, at the end of the session or whatever, and you just wanted to put it in the chat session or in the chat window, that's fine too. But um, if it's more of a, an immediate question about something I'm talking about right then, please just ask it out loud because um, it's tough for me to kind of monitor the chat questions um, while going through everything else. So with that being said, um, you should be able to see uh, my slides. Um, so let's talk about how to get into Google Slides in the first place. Um, there's several different methods, of course. Um, you need to be logged into your Google account in order to, to get to it. So generally speaking, if you want to you want to be logged into your school email account. Um, if you're already in your school email account, I always recommend that you start by going to your Google Drive and going to whatever folder that you want the slide presentation to be stored in. Um, that way it's already organized. It's already right where you can find it in the future. So, you know, go into my drive and go into whatever folder you want or make a new folder for your presentation if you don't already have one. So I can tell um, in my particular case right now that I'm in my drive in a folder called trainings and then in a subfolder of trainings called Google Slides. And then I can see that I've got my Google Slide presentation already there. If I wanted to make a new one there, I could just simply click on the new button and then go to Google Slides and it would start up a brand new untitled presentation for me to work off of. So that's one method of uh, starting up a new Google Slide um, pro, uh, file, I guess, if you will. Another method is, again, if you're already logged in, to go to the Google Apps button. So the Google Apps button is accessible from any other Google tool. So if I'm in my Google Drive already, I can see the Google Apps button up here in the upper right and I can pick slides from there. If I was in just my Gmail window, for example, um, place that I'm sure many of you spend a lot of time, same thing, I can just click on my Google Apps button, and eventually when the apps populate, I'd be able to click on slides from there. Each of those take you to the exact same place. Last but not least, I could just start a new browser window and just type slides.google.com it may look a little different to you if you go that route um, because it goes out and searches your Google Drive, shows you presentations that you've maybe worked on recently. Um, and then it also kind of gives you some templates to work off of at the, the top there. Um, you can get to those same templates um, through any of those other methods. They're just kind of not right out in front of you um, when you go the, those other routes. And like I said, I always advise you to start with Google Drive just because then you're always um, aware of where your presentation is going to be so you can easily find it in the future. If you go those other routes and you don't move the, um, the file before you're done with it, it'll just be saved under My Drive. And, um, you know, you could end up with a lot of stuff under My Drive and create kind of a big mess over time. So one of the things that it's important for you to know is if you've been a PowerPoint user for years and years, uh, you don't have to necessarily start from scratch. 
all of those old PowerPoint files that you have um, are fully compatible with Google Slides. You can take and upload your PowerPoint files into Google Drive, and it will automatically um, allow you to open them up into Google Slides. So let me give you a quick idea of what that looks like. So I'm just going to go back to my Google Drive here. I'm going to go to New. I'm going to choose File Upload. And then I would simply go and find wherever it is that I have my PowerPoint file stored at. Find one here real quick. Get one there handy, but maybe not. Sorry about that. just a second to find one. Okay, so I've got this old uh, PPT file here, admin boardroom, whatever that is. I've got a bunch of them actually. Um, let's find one, maybe this group wise training file. So I select my file anyway. Um, it's going to go through and upload it. So it'll be now saved in my Google Drive. Um, there is actually a setting that I have turned on, I think still. Let's see. Yep. So in my Google Drive up here on the gear, under settings, I've got this convert uploads turned on. And so by having that turned on, any Microsoft Office type file, like a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet, or a PowerPoint file, when I upload them to Google Drive, it'll automatically convert them into the uh, Google equivalent. So in the case of a PowerPoint file, it automatically converts it into a um, Google Slide uh, type file. I don't necessarily have to have that turned on. If I didn't, it would have uploaded it still in its native PowerPoint format. When I double clicked on it, it would not have allowed me to edit it directly. I would have been able to see the slides inside of it. Um, and then I would have just had to use the pull down at the top of the screen to tell it to open it with Google Slides. At that point, then it would have done the conversion, but it would have still left it in its original uh, native Google format or PowerPoint format. Sorry about that. So anyway, I can see that this was a PPT file or PowerPoint. It's now a Google Slides file. I'm still able to open it up. I can still see all the slides inside of it. Um, anytime you do bring a file back and forth, though, between any kind of Google format and Microsoft format, you do want to take a quick look through it, make sure that the formatting is still what you expected it to be, and that the layout and stuff like that hasn't shifted around at all. So just kind of take a quick look through, make sure it still looks, you know, like you expect it to, and if need be, just make some minor adjustments to it. So that one looks like it came through pretty well to me without any uh, major problems. Now, the opposite is true as well. So if I have a Google Slides file and I want to download it so that I can use um, PowerPoint with it at some point in the future, I can do that as well. I can simply right click on this file, for example, and I can say uh, download wherever it is. Here it is at the bottom. And when I download it, down here, it tells me it's converting it to PowerPoint. And within a few seconds, um, I'll see the actual download start. And if I was to go and look in my downloads folder, I would see now that it's being a little sluggish here. Oh, and that it opened up on another window, which you're not able to see right now, but I can see my downloads folder now. I can see that it's a PowerPoint version of this exact same file, and I'd be able to use it that way. So anyway, the, the point, key point is that you can send files back and forth between the two programs and not have to, to reinvent the wheel at all. So that's what's uh, talked about there on that slide. Um, the Google uh, Slides screen, um, you know, it's going to vary a little bit based on what you're doing at the moment. So starting over here on the left, we've got sort of our slide sorter. They call this the film strip view, where you see the individual slides um, going down the left. So you can scroll you know, through. You can also toggle down here at the bottom left between the film strip view and the grid view. If I click on grid view, then I just see kind of a larger thumbnail view of each of my slides. 
And uh, this makes it a lot easier if you're just trying to sort of juggle the slides around. Maybe I need to take this one and move it up here to make it the third slide instead of the 15th slide. I can easily see, you know, most of my slides anyway and do that kind of manipulation with them um, right from here. You can't actually edit them directly from here. So if I want to jump back to, you know, the layout of Google Slide screen, I'd simply double click on that and it's going to jump me right back to the film strip view again. Other things that um, you typically see on the um, Google Slides screen uh, down here at the bottom, there's a spot for speaker notes. So the speaker notes um, appear individually for each slide. So you can type a note separately for each slide. Um, those notes will not appear to the audience when you're in presentation mode. So if I was to hit present and go out full screen, the audience would not see those. Um, if I was presenting, let's say, from a laptop connected to a projector or a larger display, the audience would see just the full size slide on that larger display. On my laptop, I would see several things. I would see the um, a smaller version of the slide that they're seeing. I would see a preview of the next slide that's about to, to come up. I would also see my speaker notes. And I would also see a timer uh, to kind of keep me on track for you know where I am as far as the time that I've got allotted to give my presentation. So that's where the speaker notes will show up is when you're actually presenting. Or obviously here, um, typically you wouldn't be presenting from this particular screen. I see a lot of people do that. Um, they'll get in a, a setting like this, and rather than just going into present mode and you know having everybody see the the uh, slides up full screen. They just kind of go one at a time through the, the various slides. And um, the downside of that, obviously, is everything's smaller. Um, it's a little bit harder for the remote participants to see. So I'm actually going to just kind of drag this down to the bottom here so that it does make my slide a little bit bigger for you. And uh, another little trick is the control key and the plus key um, are a zoom type of a um, shortcut key, if you will. It's similar to holding the control key and using the scroll up or scroll down on your mouse. Although in the case of slides, it actually changes your slide if we do that. Um, most programs though, um, most Chrome windows, control and the scroll button on your mouse up or down will zoom in and zoom out uh, on the particular screen that you're seeing. Uh, other things that we've got on the screen here, um, over on the right, um, you'll have a window that'll change based on kind of what you're doing at that particular moment. So if you need to um, format your slides, for example, maybe you want to change the theme, um, that kind of a thing. Uh, if I'm doing that, then this window over here on the right will adjust to what I'm doing at that particular moment. If I'm formatting a video, it'll give me the video editing tools over there on the right. Same thing if I'm doing something with the graphic object or something like that. So you know, it's when you first start a new slideshow, like if I jump back to my brand new one that I started here, you see that it gave me the themes window over there because it's expecting me to pick a theme to kind of start, you know, designing what my um, slide presentation is going to look like. I don't have to do it right then and there, but um, it's just kind of something that they anticipate that you're probably going to want to do up front when you start a new presentation. You can also see when you start a new presentation, you've just got one slide. So it's a title slide by default. Um, you can choose to uh, continue and keep it as a title slide. Uh, it automatically formats kind of the main um, title in a bigger font and then gives you an opportunity for a subtitle. If all I wanted was the main title, if I didn't want any subtitle, when I click in that area, I see I've got my um, object selector here where it's outlined. I can make it you know, bigger or smaller. I can drag it around. I can also just hit the delete key. Actually, I've got to click on it again. Now I can hit the delete key and it would take the entire thing out. Um, one of the things to definitely be um, familiar with is the undo feature. And this is the same as any other program. So control Z uh, is the shortcut key to um, undo something. And each time I hit control Z, it'll go back one step uh, through the progression of things that I've done. 
Um, undo is also up here in the menu, just like it is, again, on any other program. But when you're working in a program like Slides, where um, you might be kind of drawing out different objects and things are stacked on top of each other, and you know if you get very graphical with it, um, it's not uncommon for you to drag something and suddenly you know it covers up something else or whatever and just you know be be ready to use that control z um, as necessary just to kind of undo any of the little boo-boos that you make as you're going um let's see what have we missed um the present button i kind of ref referenced that earlier um present will take you out into a full screen mode um, again, it's what the, uh, the audience would see is what you're seeing right now. I can also see some stuff down here at the bottom, um, where I could jump to a particular slide. I could just arrow left and right to go one slide at a time. If I had any kind of timing set for my slides where they like automatically switch after every five seconds or 10 seconds, I could hit play and, and have it kick into that mode. Um, I could see my speaker notes from here. I've got, uh, some pointer tools where it makes it a little bit easier to kind of, you know, kind of like a laser pointer. Um, so those are some of the tools that you'll see if you're out in the full screen mode. Um, I can just hit the escape key to jump back out of that. And um, then I'd be able to go back to editing or do whatever I needed to do. Another thing that um, you'll see with any kind of Google um, file that's shared, so Google Docs, Google Sheets, or Google Slides, is if multiple people are in your file at that particular moment, you'll see these little icons up here at the top that indicates that other people that are there are there looking at your same file at the same time. So you see some of these just show up as a little animal symbol. So I'm going to go to this one. Yeah, let me find one that I can pr pronounce. There's an anonymous capybara, I guess. Uh, I don't know what the heck that one is, but. Um, when somebody connects and they're not necessarily logged in with a Google account, it'll just show them with these anonymous um, connection icons. You still know somebody's in there. It's somebody that you've invited and that you've given permission to, but it doesn't necessarily show their name. Whereas I've got a couple others here. You know, I can tell specifically that's... Oops, shut this off. I can tell specifically that that's Emily. I can tell specifically this is Kathy because they're specifically logged into their Google account at that particular moment. So that'll show up in not just slides, but any other um, program as well. And if people are following along with you um, on the slides themselves, usually you'll see some kind of a visual indicator on the slide sorter over here on the left in our film strip view to, to indicate what slides people are looking at at that particular time. So that can help you in kind of if you're presenting at the time, hey, is everybody all in the same spot or, you know, where are we at? Is anybody paying attention? That kind of a thing. Um, so let's see, where are we at? So that's the layout of the screen. Um, some basic tips, um, you know, don't crowd your slides. Um, keep your bullet point short and, and sweet. Um, I have, have a bad habit of doing this, feeling like, hey, if I if I need to put the basic tips in, I want it all on one slide. So even if that means 20 bullets, I'm going to cram it all on one slide. Well, it doesn't cost anymore to have a second slide or a third slide or whatever. So make a second or third one. Spread those bullets out. Make it larger. Make it easier for people to see um, from a distance. Use high contrast colors, those types of things. Um, you know, obviously, if you're going to print the material out, there's maybe a printing cost involved. But um, for the most part, you're presenting, people are watching. And so who cares if it's on, you know, 20 slides instead of 10 slides. Another point is to use the built-in themes. So, you know, I've got the themes list over here on the right um, that I can pick from. I can actually go out and import some themes, um, possibly that other people have developed out on the, the web. Um, I've seen some people that um, decide that they're going to come up with their own color schemes, and sometimes they're good and sometimes they're ap absolutely awful. Um, so in my opinion, let the, the experts um, do all of that kind of work for you and just pick from the, the built-in color themes that are already there. I know it can get, get kind of boring if you uh, do a lot of uh, slideshows and you're finding yourself using the same theme over and over again. but um, 
anyway, it's, uh, for, you know, visually appealing usually if you're using one of theirs at least. Your bullet points should be short. And I put in parentheses there, not like the ones above, um, you know, usually just four or five words. Um, you know, you're the expert, you do the talking, don't be the uh, person that just sits there reading the slides to everybody. Um, you know, people get frustrated with that and then you see the, the eyes start to droop. So short bullet points, you fill in the gaps. Um, so I'll leave it at that. And then lastly, reuse your work. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, if you've been developing PowerPoints and Google Slides for a long period of time, the likelihood is that you've already made a, at least a few slides somewhere that you can reuse in whatever the presentation is that you need to give, say, today. So go out, find those old um, presentations that you've already developed, and simply copy those slides over to the presentation that you need to, to work on now. And you might be pulling two or three slides from this file and five slides from this other file, and maybe there's five more that you've got to develop new. But at the very least, you didn't have to develop every one of those slides um, fresh. So, you know, reuse your work whenever possible. And it's very simple to do. Um, if each of your presentations is in Google Slides, let's say, all that you have to do is open up each of those um, slideshows at the same time. So I'll leave this one open and I'll go and grab, say, one from my, one of my other training sessions, let's say the Google Form session. So I'll just open that up. Give it a chance to load. And let's just say that this slide number four is a slide that um, I could reuse in the presentation that I'm you know, working on for today. All I've got to do is right click on that slide, choose copy, go over to the presentation that I want to bring it into. I can kind of click in the, the sorter view here uh, in between the other slides that I want to drop it into. And I could right click and say paste. It'll bring that slide right over. And then I get a couple of questions here. Do I want to link it or do I want to, uh, or should I say, do I not want to link it or do I want to link it to the original presentation? So this is um, a really neat feature. If I say link to original presentation and then in the future, uh, a change is made to that slide that I had copied from that other presentation, when I come to this presentation in the future, it will automatically update that slide with the content that I had edited in the other one. So it links the two slides together and any editing that happens on the original will automatically get updated here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that so you can see what it looks or how it works. So I'm gonna say link to original presentation. It gives me this little visual indication in the upper right that it is linked to something else. And I could actually unlink it if I ever needed to, or I could open source, meaning that it would go out and find the original file that it was um, copied from and open it up. But let me jump over to the slide um, presentation that I copied it from, and let me make a change to this particular slide. Let's add another bullet here. And then we'll flip back over to the presentation that we copied it into. Notice how quickly that happened. It actually gave me a little button here indicating that if I click on update, it's gonna pull forward changes that have occurred on that other slide. If I actually had closed this presentation and reopened it, I don't think it would even give me that. I think it would have just done it on its own. If I go ahead and click on update though, we should see down here that that extra bullet will appear within a couple of seconds. And sure enough, there it did. So, um, where that comes in really handy would be, um, let's just think from a business perspective. Um, maybe you're on the sales force and there's 10 different sales reps and you're all out on the road all over the country and um, you know headquarters um, needs to update pricing. So they just go into the master slideshow, they change whatever the prices are, each one of those sales reps that are all throughout the country, um, when they open up their presentation that morning, um, either the, the um, 
pricing figures are automatically updated for them, or at the very least, all they've got to do is click on that update button on each of those slides. And everybody's then working from consistent numbers. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of educational uh, uses for that as well. You know, if you're a member of a of the English department at your school and you're all going to, you know, share certain slides, um, this would be a way for you to each have your own individual slide deck so that you can still have your own custom work in it. But the things that, um, you know, you don't want everybody to individually have to, to do every um, for every slideshow, um, you'd be able to share like that. And then, you know, one update would update everybody's. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this slide because it really has nothing to do with this presentation. So I am going to remove it. Way up there, delete. Okay. So anyway, that's reusing your work, combining slides from other presentations. Um, Let's move on to working with slides. So we already talked about um, how to create a new slide show. Um, it automatically will start you with a title slide. Uh, you can choose to keep it that way or not. Um, generally speaking, you would want to pick a theme. And the nice thing about it is you can just kind of click through them and see what each one really looks like. Or and you can see each one um, not only has different color settings, but also some different fonts that it uses, different sizes of um, text that it uses. Um, so you'll want to kind of think about what it is that you're presenting, who your audience is, um, you know, whether it makes any sense to, to use that particular uh, format. So that's kind of the starting point. Once you've got your title slide in, you would generally want to start adding more slides. In the upper left hand corner of the screen, there is the plus button. The plus is to add a second slide. Uh, generally, by um, default, it will then give you um, a slide that has a smaller heading area and then usually some kind of a bulleted list or a text box, um, you know, that you would type out whatever it is that you want um, uh, on that particular slide. The theme, from theme to theme, that will vary a little bit as to what that layout's going to look like. If you don't want that particular layout for that slide, you can right click on the slide and you can choose a different layout. So I could choose, for example, a title with two columns and it would give me something like this. If I wanted just a title only because I knew I was going to be putting just a bunch of graphics on it or a video clip or something like that. So or if I just want it plain blank so that I can, you know, start from scratch and build up whatever I want on there. So all of those uh, choices are there for you. Um, the key is that you're not stuck with any of them. If you put in, you know, two or three bullets on this slide and you realize that's all you're going to have anyway, you really don't need a second column. You could just click on that second um, column box, if you will, and delete it. If I want to take and stretch this out, I could just click on it and stretch it out to whatever size I need it to be. So all of that is fluid. Um, you know, it's just a box that you can do whatever you want with. Um, if you want to type in bullets, but it didn't automatically turn bullets on for you, that's fine too. Just highlight what you've got there and up on your menu bar. Uh, mine's kind of hiding now because I've zoomed things in a little bit, but I can go under more and I can see that I've got a, a numbered list choice or I could just do the standard bullet choice. And with the bullets, it automatically builds in, you know, the types of um, apps, if you will, for sub bullets and sub sub bullets and whatever. And all I'm doing to indent is use the tab key, shift and the tab key would pull it back out. If I hit the enter key, it, you know, gives me another major bullet. So. Nothing really special there, nothing different than what you'd find in, um, you know, like Google Docs or Word if you were doing a bulleted list as well. Once we've got a few slides, so let me add a few extra slides here, and we'll just call this, say, slide three, just so we've got some kind of reference on it. Slide four. If I suddenly decided that, um, slide four needs to be slide two instead. I can just simply come over here and click and drag it to whatever position I need it to be in. And now slide four is actually slide two. So, you know, 
obviously I typically wouldn't name my slides by slide number, but um, you get the point. Um, I can also duplicate a slide. So if I get a slide set up just the way that I want it formatting wise, um, I could just right click on it and say duplicate. I actually did that um, in my particular slideshow. Um, you know, I got the theme set up the way that I wanted. Most of my slides were going to be the same kind of bulleted list. I had this extra stuff down in the lower right and lower left-hand corners. Um, I could have made my own theme and stuff like that, but I frankly didn't have time to do it at the at that point. So all I did is once I had this layout done is I just right-clicked, said duplicate slide, and then I just simply went in here and quickly um, selected the text on the slide, got rid of it, and went on to the next slide, you know, whatever that um, text needed to be. If I want to get rid of a slide, as you've already seen, we can right click and say uh, delete. Another common thing that you may want to do um, or may need to do is to uh, skip a slide or hide one. So skip a slide, um, kind of back to that idea of reusing your work. Um, you'll see a lot of salespeople that'll have a slide deck that's like 200 slides long. And you're like, uh, you know, hey, I've got 15 minutes or I'm giving you 15 minutes and that's it. Um, they uh, are very good about um, knowing what slides they need to specifically show you. And usually when they walk in the door, they'll already have, you know, 90% of their slides skipped or hidden. And that way they can just jump to those key things that are customized to what your needs are, what products they're trying to push on you or, you know, whatever the case might be. So all they have to do in order to do that is click on skip slide. You can see it kind of shows up a little bit dimmer, shows up with a little eye with a slash through it, indicating that it's not going to be uh, seen. Um, obviously, you can still see it here. I can still work on the slide if I needed to. But if I was in present mode, that slide would not appear at all. It would just skip right past it and, you know, jump from slide six to slide eight. You can do that um, very quickly and easily. All of these features, actually, that I'm talking about, you can do quickly and easily on multiple slides. So if I was to, say, have slide seven selected, if I also wanted to um, skip slides three, four, five, and six, I could hold my shift key down. And while I'm holding my shift key down, I would just click on uh, slide three, for example. You can see that all five of those slides are now selected at the same time. And now if I was to right click and say skip, all five of them would automatically go into this to being skipped. I can also randomly pick from the list. So normally if I click on three and then I click on five, you see, well, I just lost three. Now I click on seven, well, now I lost five. If I hold the control key instead, CTRL, lower left-hand corner of your keyboard, that will allow me to randomly pick through my list individual slides. And then again, I can do the same thing. I could say skip slides or I could say delete. Um, obviously you wanna be careful with delete because you're gonna do it on a bunch at the same time. Or if they're already skipped and I want to unskip them, I can just click on skip slides again and it'll remove this checkbox and suddenly they're all back. So that uh, shift click and control click, um, those again are not necessarily unique to Google Slides. That would work in PowerPoint. It would work in your Google Drive if you wanted to delete some random files to what your um, folders and so forth. Now, notice it didn't obviously unhide slides four and six because I didn't have those selected at the time. So I'll just go ahead and unhide those as well. Let's see, where was I? Um, cut, copy, and paste. We've kind of talked about that already um, as far as, you know, copying a slide from one presentation to another. Um, I can also do it in the same presentation. So I could have copied this and then just in the same presentation said paste. Um, that's really the same thing as duplicate though. Um, so most often I probably wouldn't do it that way. I guess the main advantage of doing a, a cut or copy and paste within your same presentation is just that you could copy the slide and then scroll down to maybe the end of the presentation and paste it there. It would save you a step from having to move it around after the fact. Okay, um, this slide talks about different types of object boxes. So when we talk about an object box, we're talking about any of these things that get sort of a blue outline with the little handlebars around them. So it could be my title, it could be my, the body of my um, 
slide. It could be this little graphic I've got here in the lower left, uh, lower left or lower right corners. I've added a text box to this slide. I've added an arrow. I've get, added another text box, a graphic. All of these things are object boxes, essentially. They're just a box that contains something. So once you've got um, an object box on your screen, um, you can easily move those boxes around just by clicking and dragging. You can resize them easily by grabbing the um, handlebars. Let me show you how to add a, a quick object box. Uh, a very common one might be a text box. So I've got that right on my toolbar, but I also can do it right from the insert menu. And then I would just drag out what I want the size of my text box to be. Whatever I do in here, my tools like my alignment then will work within that box. You know, any of the text formatting I can still do within that box. Um, shading or fill colors. So I can fill this box with a particular color if I want to. If I want to go back to transparent, I can do that and get rid of it. Um, all the text color, highlight color, all that kind of stuff would apply that to that particular object box. Now, when I click off of it, you can see that that outline went away. Um, if I need to, I can click on it again. It'll bring it back. I can move my mouse to one of the edges and then move the box around. I can certainly make it larger or smaller. Now, notice that a text box or any kind of a object, frankly, that has text in it, the fact that I stretch it out bigger does not impact the size of the, the text itself. Um, you know, obviously if this was like a circle that I had drawn or a, a rectangle or something like that, if I go here and say insert shape and I draw out a, a circle, resizing the circle, in fact, resizes the circle just as you would expect. But if I click inside the circle, I put some text in there, let's say that I make it a little bit bigger than that, but my mind says, hey, if I want to make that text bigger, let me grab the box and just make the circle bigger. Those two things are not correlated to each other. The text still is controlled separately by the text size list or um, pull down menu up here at the top, okay? So another thing to be aware of when it comes to objects is um, alignment. So Let's say that um, I want to make some kind of a, a little chart with maybe you know three circles in it, kind of in a pyramid type of a view. So let's see if I can kind of get this one over here a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So maybe I want to have one here, one next to it, and kind of one sitting on top of it. Um, if I go ahead and insert another shape and shapes and pick another circle, draw it out. I can now drag this around, and what I want you to watch is this red line that appears. And I know it's pretty small, maybe hard to see, but you see right now a red horizontal line that kind of connects those two circles to each other. If I move a little bit, that red line disappears. I'm suddenly getting another red line up at the top of these other um, column boxes. If I go over here, I'm suddenly getting a red vertical line that's connecting between those two circles. So as I'm moving, all these red lines are popping up all over the place. What those lines are trying to do for you is to make it so that you can line these different objects up with each other. So it's right now telling me that if I was to leave the circle where it is, it will be uh, directly centered above the other circle as far as left to right is concerned. If I bring it back over here, I can tell now that it's directly centered vertically uh, against the circle to the left of it. So it's just trying to make it easier for you to line things up. I'm going to get rid of these other boxes just so that they're not in our way. I also would have the same kind of a thing as far as the center of the slide. So that's indicating that I'm centered on the slide itself right now. This would indicate that I'm... There it is, centered uh, vertically on the slide. So those uh, tools are very handy. Now, one of the things that um, you may have noticed is I just made another circle, but my new circle is not at all the same size as my other circle. And um, 
it could be kind of a pain in the neck to, to try to make these all the same. So if you want to do something like that, just click on the object you've already made, copy it. So I'm going to hit Control C to copy, but I could have also right clicked and said copy from that menu. And then I just will go ahead and paste a couple of more of them. So Control V is paste. I can do that as many times as I want to. I really don't need that many, so I'm going to just go back to my original three that I was talking about. Now I've got three circles that are exactly the same size. I could take these and try to get them lined up nicely using that red arrow and get something like that maybe. Any of these objects, if I want to type inside of them, literally all I've got to do is click on the object and then I can start typing. Okay, I could change the color on any of them. Again, back to the fill color thing if I wanted to. And then, of course, I can change the text color as well. So the text color is got the A symbol, and you may have to do you know something that's a higher contrast so that you can still read it depending on the color of the, the object that you've got there. So that is um, you know how you make uh, some kind of a shape object. Um, using the alignment tools that they've got in there. The next thing we're going to talk about is how to group objects. Um, so let me get rid of this as well. So let's say that I want to be able to um, keep these circles just as they are and be able to copy that same thing to use it on another slide, or I want to be able to move it around easily. Um, Maybe I want to be able to resize the whole thing at the same time. If I grab each of these individually and I start resizing them, it's going to be nearly impossible for me to get all three of them to be the same size every time. So what I can do instead is if I click and hold the shift key or the control key while I click on each one of these individually. So I clicked on this one, the red one, and hold the control key and click on the blue one. Now you can see it's kind of grabbed both at the same time. I'm going to hold the control key and click on that teal one. Now I've got all of them. If I right click and I choose group, what it does is it now makes one object out of those three. And if I now need to move this around, I can literally grab it and drag it and all of it moves together. If I was to copy it because I need it maybe on another slide, I can go to another slide. I could come over here and paste it the whole thing comes all together. I can delete it all at once. If I need to resize it, I can resize it, and all of the circles are going to resize at the same time. And that way, again, they're all going to stay consistently um, the same size as each other. So, you know, you might be saying to yourself, why the heck would I ever do this? I don't know. Um, when I get into to Google Slides, if I'm trying to illustrate, you know, some kind of a hierarchical chart or um, a number of other things. Um, I found myself doing this uh, a number of times, in fact. So um, you just got to figure out what your use might be. Now, just because you've grouped it doesn't mean you still can't edit the individual objects. So notice if I click on this, and then if I want to do something with my red circle, if I click a second time, it now is highlighted just or selected um, that individual circle. I could suddenly resize just that one circle. I'm going to undo that. I could change just the fill color of just that one circle. Whereas if I click and the entire thing is selected and I change my fill color, all of the circles would change at the same time. I'm just undoing that each time so you can see what the difference is. But the key is just because it's grouped doesn't mean you lose the ability necessarily to edit one in individual object within. OK, um, need to move on here because I'm running short on time. Uh, another thing to be aware of with objects is um, sometimes you may end up stacking them on top of each other. Um, so maybe let me ungroup these. I'm just going to right click on this right now and choose ungroup so they're back to individual separate objects. And let's say that I want to do something like this. But in reality, I kind of want them to look more like a maybe a centipede type of a thing. Um, you can right, uh, right click on any individual object and then use the order choice to bring it up to the top of the stack or down 
uh, lower in the stack. So I can see that I can bring it to front or bring it forward. Bringing it forward means that it goes up just one level at a time. If you had a whole bunch of things stacked on top of each other, it would bring it up just one level. I can also see a shortcut key here, the control with the up arrow uh, or the control with the down arrow if I was trying to move it back. Or I can bring it all the way to the top by saying bring to front. So I'm going to click on bring to front. And notice how it now brought that one all the way to the top. If I want to now bring this one up on top, same concept, order, bring to front. And now they're kind of maybe in a, uh, a way that, it, you know, that you were looking for. In my particular slideshow, um, I had to do that in a few cases um, where the text got really close to the bottom. And what was happening then, let's say that I added a couple of more bullets here. So I've now added actually two bullets to the bottom of this um, slide. The last one, though, is actually covered up by this um, little graphic down here. So this might be a spot where I could say order send backward, and then it would bring that text over top of it so that it's still readable. So those are object boxes. That's how you can group and ungroup. That's how you can change the order um, of how they're stacked on top of each other. Um, and again, that applies to any kind of object box, whether it's a shape that you've drawn, whether it's a graphic, whether it's a text box or whatever. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is how to add a video clip to your um, Google Slideshow. Um, Google uh, and YouTube are one in the same company. So of course um, they, um, really give you easy tools for adding YouTube videos to your um, slide deck. Um, if you want to add a video, all you have to do is go to the insert menu, choose video. You see you've got three choices up here. I can search YouTube. Um, so if I wanted to search, oops, by clicking the box. Search YouTube, it would go out and find, you know, a bunch of stuff that um, is related to that. or if I've already been on YouTube and I um, know what video that I want specifically, I can literally copy and paste the URL of that video right here. That's typically what I advise people to do because that allows you to kind of preview things ahead of time um, and see exactly which video you want. So if I just open another tab, I go to YouTube and who knows is going to show up here. Maybe I've got a, a football video that I want uh, to, to play. I'm just going to stop this so it doesn't actually start playing. All that I need is this address up here at the top, the URL. So I can right click on that and say copy. I can jump back over to my slideshow, wherever it is. And in that by URL box, I can paste in, right click, paste the URL to that video. It shows me the sort of thumbnail view of it so I know that I got the right one. I can select it. It'll take just a second and now the uh, YouTube video is going to show up on my slide. I can make it bigger or smaller. Other things I can do with it though over here on my video playback menu notice that it automatically brought this up for me because it knew that I was working on a video. Um, I could or I should be able to go in and edit the start and end time. Um, for some reason, it's telling me that I can't use that video. So let me find another one real quick. Uh, whatever this is. So again, I'm just going to grab the uh, URL. Insert video. I'm going to paste that URL. Okay, there we go. So notice over here now I've got the ability to set the start and end time. So if I know that I only need 20 seconds of that video and that 20 seconds happens to be at the 15 minute and 15 second mark, and I want it to play just through the 15 minute and 35 second mark, those 20 seconds, then I can set it that way. And when I'm playing my presentation, it'll exclusively go and play just those 20 seconds. I can also choose whether I want to autoplay when presenting, meaning that when I'm in present mode, when I get to this slide, it'll automatically start playing the video without me having to click on anything. And I can also choose if I want to mute the audio um, so that it just plays the video only, obviously. 
<clears throat> so um, that is uh, one way to insert a video. Another um, option that you have is if you have a video stored in your Google Drive, you can click on the Google Drive tab. It'll actually go out and search your Google Drive and see if it can find any video clips already there. So that's what it's doing right now with mine. Um, it actually doesn't even give me, you know, my folder list to go out and look through. It just narrows down my list um, to whatever videos that I already had. So I could grab one of these videos, select it, and um, within, you know, a few seconds, that video is going to show up. And I've got the same choices over here. I can see this is only a 59-second video, but I can edit that as well. What you need to be aware of if you do um, pull in a video from your Google Drive and then you expect like a student from home to be able to watch that presentation is you're going to need to make sure that that video um, that you've given permissions for anybody that has a link to that video to be able to watch it. So I've got a whole completely different class about uh, Google Drive and setting permissions, um, but that's just something to be aware of is Otherwise, they'll get to that slide, and if they don't have any permissions to watch the video, um, you know, the, the video window will be there, but they won't be able to, to actually watch it. Okay, let's see where we're at. So it's just more about video clips. So giving people access to your slides, um, if I want to give um, somebody access to my Google Slideshow, I, all I have to do is click on the share button. This is the same, uh, and it makes me name it first. I still hadn't, it was still called Untitled Presentation, so I'll just call this um, Okay, this is the same exact share window that you would have if you were using Google Docs, Google Sheets, um, out in Google Drive, whatever. Um, you can just simply start typing in a person's name. You can put in a list of email addresses if you want. You can decide, are they going to be able to edit your presentation? Or most of the time with this, you just want them to be able to view it. So you would set it to view. Um, you can type in a note. And then you can choose whether to notify people or not. When I hit send, what it actually does then is it sends an email to that person um, along with my note and a link to this particular file. I also, though, could go to advanced. And right now it says only I can access it. It doesn't even list Melissa yet because I hadn't saved her. But I could change this. And I could say anybody that has the link, no sign in required, meaning they don't need a Google account. That could be a parent at home um, that just has a Yahoo mail or no email you know, whatsoever. Um, if I change it to that, I make sure that it's still giving them view only access so that some random people aren't editing my slides. I could save this. And then all I would have to do is take this link up here, right click and copy. It's the exact same link that um, is up here. So I could right click and copy from here as well. But then I could go to my Facebook page, to my Twitter account, to my um, website. To an email, whatever, paste in that URL and send it out to uh, whoever my audience is. And because I set it to anyone with the link can view, they would be able to see my um, slideshow at it at whatever time they they chose. Um, so again, that's the same um, permissions that you would set in any kind of Google um, program. It's not just slides, but um, a lot of times it's pretty relevant to slides. Um, the collaboration activity, I'm going to leave that to you just to take a look at, just some ideas about how you could do some team activities with students, either in class or remote uh, with Google Slides. Um, using Google Slides with Google Meet, that's exactly what we're doing right now, right? So um, I've got the Google Meet connected. I went into present mode, um, and then I just simply opened up my Google Slideshow as the window that you were able to uh, view. Um, I um, would advise that you have your slideshow in a separate copy of Chrome so that you can have your Meet window open and your Chrome window open at the same time with your presentation in it. And that way you can see both. Um, that's how I've got it. Actually, one, one of my screens, I see all of you. My other screen, I see what I'm sharing with you. 
Um, obviously, it's a little easier if you get multiple screens because then things are big enough for you to still work out of, but not necessarily required. Um, you can use uh, and even edit your Google Slides from a smartphone or an iPad. There is a Google Slides app that you would want to go into the Android store or the um, iPhone or the Apple store and uh, just search for slides. Um, if you install the actual app, then you're able to create a new slideshow, you're able to pick a theme, you're able to edit the slideshow, you're able to do everything that I can do right now with some limited formatting capabilities. Um, but let's say you were, you know, in the airport and you needed to make a quick change to your to your slide presentation, you could pull out your cell phone, make the change there. When you got off the plane, you get in front of the clients, open up the, the laptop, and all those edits would already be there. So um, great capabilities. So we've got just a couple of minutes left. I know I kind of blasted through uh, some of the stuff, probably spent more time on some of the stuff than maybe uh, necessarily needed to. Um, but if you have any questions, um, you know, feel free to open your mic uh, on mute and ask them. Um, and I'll try to answer them right now. Otherwise, feel free to email me at any time and, um, you know, get back to you. Um, can you add music yet? So um, there is under insert and audio. Um, again, you can go out and search um, your drive or uh, other things that have been shared with you. So I don't know for sure what kind of a file that it's looking for. I'm guessing probably like a, a MP3 or a WAV file. Um, but yeah, you see that it went out and it in fact found um, some audio files here. So I'll go ahead and double click on that and let's see what it looks like here. It tells me that it's creating the audio. It shows up as a little tiny speaker down here at the bottom. It was a 30 second click, clip. I can see that I can choose whether I have to click on it to play it or whether it's gonna play automatically. When I get to that slide, I can choose what volume level. Do I want it to slop, stop playing the music when I go to the next slide or do I want it to continue? Maybe I put it on slide one and then it's gonna automatically just keep playing uh, throughout all of the slides. And do I want it to loop, meaning when it hit to the end of it, it just starts back over again. So, um, so yeah, looks like we can do that. And I can stretch this out a little bigger, maybe. There we go. Bob, yeah. if, you, if you wanted to put this on a flash drive, what would happen with the video? Well, you're really not going to put it on a flash drive because um, Google Slides needs to be um, it's in the cloud, right? So you could take and download this file as a PowerPoint file. Then that PowerPoint file could be put on a flash drive. But even then, because of the fact that the video clips that you've linked to are all in the cloud someplace, either on YouTube or in your Google Drive, when you went to play that PowerPoint file, it would still need access to those cloud resources in order to play those videos. So that's exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So the good thing about it, though, is as long as you've got internet, you don't need a flash drive, right? You just go to wherever you're, you're going and open uh, Google Drive and find your presentation and open it up and there it is. Um, you don't have to worry about my flash drive doesn't work, my flash drive's not compatible, I ran it over with my car, I ran it through the washing machine, all those things that can happen easily with the flash drive, so. Well, we were trying to create flash drives for a toolkit. Gotcha, so. okay, yeah. So, I mean, it can still work, just the students would still have to have internet access in order to uh, be able to access any of those video clips. So, all right, I hate to cut everybody off, but I do have another class starting like in one minute. So um, feel free to email me any further questions and you'll get a, um, again, you can take a look at the recording after the fact if you'd like and you're shared with me probably somewhere in about a half an hour or so. Have a good day.